Let's do it. Welcome back to another episode of the one and only Short Bus Cinema. I'm one of your hosts, Rick, and with me as always is my good friend, my pal, my companion, also a big fan of Trick or Treat, Mr. Johnny Krug. What's up, man? What is up? I'm, I'm glad to be back, man. Yeah, man, uh, this is going to be fun. And not only do we have Johnny and myself in the bus, we have a, a returning special guest. That's right. Been here once, going to do it again. It's it's our favorite. It's it's Miss Jamie Sammons. What's happening, girl? Hey guys, I'm so glad to be back. Yeah, and that's right. I did do it once more, and I came back. So you must be doing something right. Well, that's that's good. It's better than hit it and quit it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, this is going to be kind of a special one because this is a bad movie. But uh, I'm very, very fond of this one. And I know Johnny's got a few that we've got in queue coming up that he's fans of as well. So just because it's bad doesn't mean that you can't still love it. Well, and, and, and this what is we're talking about is the feature-length uh, film of Bible Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost hit a Hail Ming button there, but I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about the 1980. 1980- Two slash eighty three. That's a, there's a big debate on when it actually came out. Jekyll and Hyde together again. This one is one that I caught. I don't know. I think I was fifteen or so when this came out. Maybe a little younger, thirteen, fourteen, somewhere around in there. And this is one of those movies that came on either night flight or up all night. It was on one of those shows where you know you really weren't supposed to be watching it at a certain age. And I just kind of fell in love with this one so i thought you know what i know it's bad i'm bringing it to the table ask jamie about coming on and talk about it she's like sure that's it is that what you said i think <laughs> I, something like that yeah i will talk about anything with you guys so you know i was like yeah i don't know i'd never seen this one before oh so really cool. i'm always looking for a reason to see something new all right so uh if you're following along and you want to check this thing out it is on YouTube, I believe, in pieces. <laughs> but uh, it is uh, Jekyll and Hyde together, get, uh, together again, and it's got a guy named Mark Blankfield in it. Uh, I discovered him before this movie. I just didn't put it together. It was the same guy. But there was a TV show. Jamie, you probably really remember this one because we're right there at that same age group. <laughs> uh, you had uh, Saturday Night Live on NBC, and then ABC did a show called Fridays. Yeah. So that's that's where this guy came from. He was one of the main actors on Fridays. The skit came about. He did a a like a pharmacist, you know, he he was a pharmacist and he was too busy taking the drugs that he wouldn't wait on people. <laughs> so that's where the idea for this kind of spawned from and they took that and then took the idea of a Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing and ran with it. And uh Madness ensues. So, the other thing about this too is, uh, are you diehard Kiss fans out there? There was a video that came out in the '80s called "Kiss Exposed," where an interviewer goes up to Paul Stanley's house and he's ringing the doorbell and stuff. Well, it's it's this guy. It's Mark Blankfield. So, he's tied into just about everything I love. I feel like I've seen him the whole time. I was, I was thinking he looked familiar, and I was trying to place him. He has uh, a little bit of a. Oh, like, yeah, you know what I knew him from. Was uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights? <laughs> I was going to bring oh, that up next. <laughs> that might be it. Oh, did he play the blind guy? Yeah, blink. That's it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. Then that's it. That's exactly it. Thank you, John. So he's one of those guys you've seen and you just didn't really, you know, put it together. That's where you saw him at. But uh, again, Fridays, J- Johnny. I don't know if you've ever seen Fridays or not, but uh, you can dig up some of the episodes, and it's straight up like Saturday Night Live type show. But I that's where I'd you like get. Oh, it's it's it had some really good high moments. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you get uh, the guy that played Kramer on on uh, Seinfeld. 
this that's where he got his start too yeah that's right and i want to say did andy kaufman do a stint on that before he went to saturday yes Night yeah he did and it's one of those things where it it blew up and they were doing okay. a scene and they got in a big fight on on the set during the recording right. and yeah ties into so many things of me being a kid especially with the fridays thing and then this movie and i'm gonna quit yakking about it if you want to discover some of the stuff you can go check it out yourself so uh, there's a lot i'm holding back talking about because of just my giddiness over this goofy movie <laughs> it's right up there it's right up there with party animal with me man if you if you put party animal in this movie back to back i'm a happy camper <laughs> they do kind of go together i guess they do they do big time so all right folks so what we're gonna do we're gonna take a little short break and we're gonna come right back at you Movie reviews all the time. See if these films age just like a fine wine. Oh no, we'll jack it up again. TV, games, and more with them. Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb are all the rage, but we'll lock those critics up in one cage. The Jacked Up Review Show, every Wednesday evening on Spotify, Podbean, Anchor, and other available podcast apps. Back with Jekyll and Hyde together again from 1982. The IMDb score for this is a 6.3, which is actually super high. It's pretty awesome. Wow. I mean, for a movie like this, I guess I spend too much time on IMDb, but movies like this usually get between three and four. This movie is directed by Jerry Belson, who it looks like he wrote a lot for Tracy Ullman, but um, the only thing I can see that he directed besides this was a movie called Surrender with Sally Field and Michael uh, Michael Caine and I think Steve Gutenberg too. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Caine. <laughs> Michael Caine. <laughs> um, and and the writers of this movie there were four of them if you exclude uh, Robert Louis Stevenson and it looked like they just did a lot of like sitcom work and stuff like that nothing really super yep. major stood out. The cast: Mark Blankfield. Bess Armstrong, Krista Erickson, Tim Thomerson, and Michael McGuire. Tim Thomerson, man. Doll man himself. <laughs> <laughs> Doll man in lingerie. <laughs> He's also uh, uh, Burdett in uh, Rhinestone with St- Stallone and Dolly Parton. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Tyler Burdett. I was just thinking about Trancers. Trancers as well. That's right. So he yeah, yeah he did a lot of uh, full moon stuff. Full moon, yeah. He was in Near Dark. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, the dad. Yeah. Uh, he's one of those guys again that I grew up seeing his stand up and stuff, and then he broke off into the movies. So, are we ready to dive into this one? Oh yeah. It's the only movie I've ever seen where the credits come up and they get snorted. <laughs> <laughs> It spells out Jekyll and Hyde together again on the screen, then it shrinks down to like a line, and then you see a nose come through with a dollar bill, and it snorts up the credits. <laughs> and, and that pretty much sets the tone for the entire movie. It, re- it really does. We go to uh, what we would call the first opening scene, and we're at a hospital called Our Lady of Pain and Suffering. <laughs> so uh, I did like that. This, yeah, th- this movie is a weird mixture of kind of like airplane trying to be airplane type humor and then you get this crazy physical humor which is very very jim carrey i didn't mean for that to rhyme very very jim carrey (laughs) i'll put a beat behind you (laughs) this dude has to be jim carrey's dad because it's almost like he ripped off half these scenes and used them in in his own uh career shattering movies Ace Ventura 2. So what's going on is our hero, which is uh, our doctor that we're talking about here, Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll Jekyll. He's doing brain surgery. And while this is going on, you've got a weird set of students that over here just watching him perform this task. He's got a nurse beside him who's uh, on her face mask. She's actually got some lipstick drawn on and her cleavage is showing, which is... Who is it, Johnny? Cassandra Peterson. That's right. Elvira herself. While the surgery is going on, we've got this old guy, Hubert Howes, and supposed to be the richest, oldest 
man on the planet, I guess. And he's he's wanting to have the first ever complete body transplant. So he's wanting <laughs> everything replaced, which is kind of confusing, guys. I don't know what y'all think of when you think of full transplant. I mean, are we talking just organs? Because, you know, he, he gets the guy to come in in a little bit to offer some jewels. <laughs> well, he doesn't have a butt, though, either. He's got to just both the testicles, too. Right. Are we just replacing everything except the brain? <laughs> I guess I guess that's what we're going for. I guess that's the total transplant. Yeah, I guess they're just doing a, like a complete engine overhaul, just pulling everything out and putting it all back in. But at what point does it become not you anymore? Right. Yeah. I, I guess that's why you keep the brain, I guess, and, and use it from that standpoint. You're still who you are mentally, but everything else has changed. I mean, we saw body parts. We know how that ends. To kind of set the mood, I've got this first sample here of the movie where the guy that is basically in charge of the hospital is kissing up to, <laughs> to Herbert Hughes and uh, it kind of goes like this. Very impressive, Dr. Carew. I am glad you approve, sir. Dr. Jekyll is the finest surgeon we've ever had here at Our Lady of Pain and Suffering. It's only fitting that he should perform the world's first total transplant on you, the world's richest man, <laughs> Hubert Howes. Have I told you how proud we all are here at Our Lady to be performing this operation? Several times. You're a kiss-ass, aren't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so this dude's old decrepted. I mean, he's just laying there in the bed, got all these tubes and wires hooked up to him. While this is going on, he's actually got a video screen up there, and he's watching Dr. Jekyll perform this surgery, right? So he's, you know, being impressed. And then uh, Dr. Jekyll starts doing this thing where he's showing, like, if you control the brain, you can control the body from doing everything. So he does the thing where the hand raises up, and it's giving peace signs and all this weird stuff, shooting the bird. And he, then he announces that he's giving up surgery. He's no longer going to do it. And, of course, that throws the old guy into a panic. That gives us this bite. I intend to devote every waking moment to research. Research that I hope will one day unlock man's brain and release survival instincts, enabling him to make himself well. Research that will one day eliminate the costly painful, almost inhumane procedure we now call surgery. Uh. Dr. Jekyll, what do you intend to replace surgery with? Drugs. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, you can hear right there. We're going for this almost airplane slash hot shots type humor, which is what I like least about this movie. It's this stuff I don't care for. Do you not like spoofs on the whole, or is it just I, in this film you don't like it? Well, I like Zucker Brothers. Okay. But everybody else that's trying to be Zucker Brothers, to me, it just falls It falls a little flat, you know? Oh, I agree. I I agree. When I started watching this, I was like, oh, okay, because you immediately get the you get the idea. Uh, right. Immediately that it's a spoof. I yeah. was like, okay, I love a good spoof. Yeah. This wasn't one of those. <laughs> exactly. Well, you're, you're right. I mean, that's the thing about this movie, because it, it's never about the written script that is funny. It's the off-the-cuff things this guy does when he's in character is what makes it wonderful, because obviously he's just ad-libbing it. <laughs> yeah. So well, maybe he thought the script wasn't funny either. So oh, well, I'll give you a... We'll talk about it at the end of this, because there's a follow-up movie to this. And I'll talk oh. about it for a second. This is at the point that we're just setting up the story, right? So it's that thing of tying in, substituting, you know, surgery with drugs. So he's going to go back to, you know, to working on coming up with cure-alls with just making some drugs. And at this point, the old man, Herbert House, threatens the, the hospital manager, says he's going to, like, kill him in, a, in front of his family and burn him at the stake and bury him under a garage. I mean, <laughs> he just makes a big list of threats of what he's going to do to this guy if he doesn't get Dr. Jekyll to perform the surgery on him. And again, none of this really matters. No. You know? <laughs> it really doesn't. It really doesn't at all. But what you do find out is the, the manager chases after Dr. Jekyll in, in an elevator and tries to talk him into 
you know, performing the surgery. This one more surgery. Now, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but this is, again, this is Mark Blankfield doing what he does. He's always pulling up his pants, like up to his belly button, and then he puts his hands in his pocket and pulls his pants back down. You know what? Did y'all that's notice funny. That? I, I noticed he had some weird mannerisms, and it was all in that area, but yeah. I didn't notice that's what he was doing. And he'd keep pulling up his pants, and he'd put his hands in his pocket and pull it right back down where it was. And he'll just keep doing that. No, <laughs> you know? I never noticed that. Yeah, and so it's all these little quirks that he's throwing in there that shows you, you know, well, this, this guy's a meticulous kind of guy, but then he's kind of unhinged at the same time. Go back and just zip through there and look at for this stuff, because it's quite funny when you start watching it, because you can tell he's trying to pull attention to it, but but not steal the scene either. But anyway, I'm, this is just, I, I'm excited to watch that, because, yeah, because he's a... He's kind of well. This movie has a lot going on all at the same time, but yeah, he always has yeah. something like a lot of going on. The way he talks and stuff, he, it's kind of like Groucho Marx when he did his dude. Work, very, right? very Groucho Marx. Then we find out that Doctor Jekyll is engaged to the manager's daughter, and you get to see a weird little scene here where uh, I guess it's critical care. So they got all the old people put away, and he, he goes up to the woman that's saying. My back is killing me, and I smell death. <laughs> and uh, you know she's laying on a on a bedpan. You know it's like way up across her back, and he's like, again, the 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 physical comedy of this of him like picking up her body and slamming her down and all this stuff, and he pulls the bedpan out. <laughs> I, I don't think I ever in a million years thought I would see the old next door neighbor from Alf making I don't know some like <laughs> orgasmic noises. <laughs> As he's like pulling a wow. bedpan out from under her. <laughs> Holy crap. She's also the uh, Jerry Seinfeld's <laughs> mom on Seinfeld. Uh, yeah, that I can see. Yeah, but I, I forgot about the Alf thing. God, I haven't seen Alf in so long. Jekyll goes in here to, to find Mary, which is his girlfriend's fiance's name. And he's walking around and he's seeing all the patients and he's all about taking care of the people. He's just running around touching people, looking their eyes and all this kind of stuff. Then Mary shows up. She's been out shopping. Now, apparently they were supposed to have a date and he forgot to show up because he's too busy working. So it's already setting this whole thing up. <laughs> and then it gets to the scene about him adopting a, a, a child overseas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We got a little sound bite of this is the letter that she wrote, and Mary's reading it, but here's the actual audio from it. Dear American Father, the day will soon come when you and the other running dogs of imperialism will be disemboweled by the subjugated masses, and your bones will be left to rot beneath the rising sun of revolution. P.S. Thank you for the comb. <laughs> Thank you for the comb. Yeah, we, um, <laughs> my wife had me rewind that, actually, because we are both like, did, he just, did she just say that? Take My dad room. had a bunch of kids overseas. <laughs> so, you know, it's just funny. I mean, not... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he had adopted a oh. lot. <laughs> I was like, I, I mean, that's the case with a lot of families, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he was always adopting kids from from Sally Struthers. I don't <laughs> or Bonnie Franklin went back when... At this point, uh, they walk outside together, and this is where you meet Newt. Now, this is Tom, uh, Tim Thomerson, and he's a plastic surgeon, and he's always talking about the recent work he's done. He's always messing with his face and messing with his hair and all this kind of stuff. And he's kind of hitting on you know, how attractive Mary is, and Jekyll is pretty much aloof to all this, right? He's not sexually driven at all. It's all about work. After this, it cuts to Dr. Jekyll in his, in his lab, and he's making up all these different versions and uh, of, of the new drug, right? And he's been giving it to some mice, and he starts taking notes of what's happening, and one of the mice is standing there, and he's got his hands over his eyes like he's crying, and he's like, yeah, that's, I have to say that's a failure. It goes to the other mouse, and he has a letter tied to him, and he had hung himself in, in the cage. That but I thought was funny. It's there. It's not quite Zucker Brothers, <laughs> but it's there. It's there. Yeah. It's on the screen. Kentucky Fried Movie is one of my favorite spoofs ever, right? Uh, us too. Why is it that we, we see these scenes in this... And we're like, eh, wasn't that funny? But when the Bruce Lee guy picks up a transmission oh my God. and goes to hit a guy over the head with it, we're like, now that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, th I think it's timing. You're right. I think it's the way that they write them out and makes it work. But the, the you know, to me, every spoof, even you know, like Hot Shots, is even slow, slightly. Well, Amazon Wind on the Moon is actually Kentucky Fried Movie Part Two. Yep, we love that one too. And but it but it's still a little short, right? It's still missing. It's something. not. Yeah, it's not the same. And yeah. uh, like 
one of my favorite parts of that is the um, Arsenio Hall bit mm-hmm. where. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, where it's he, fantastic. He comes home from work and yeah. <laughs> the bitch don't live here. <laughs> <laughs> it is almost like the I, uh, the the Joy of Sex album in the first. Yes, movie, just yeah, without yeah, the yeah. sex, right? Um, and so it has some it has some funny parts, but it is not as good as yeah. Kentucky Fried Movie. Yeah, but we are we are right on the same page. <laughs> I don't think Airplane Two is as good as Airplane. Now, Absolutely not. The the thing is, it's it actually is not bad, but it's yeah. just more of like they pretty much hit every single joke they hit in the first one, right? And of like, well, you didn't you didn't change anything, right? Except they added William Shatner. You got William Shatner going shh, <laughs> so the door goes shh. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's a different movie, but. Uh, so what happens here is, uh, while he's working on this, a nurse comes in and says, Doctor, I need you to come to the emergency room, because there's a lady that's got a foreign object stuck in her hoo-ha. <laughs> a foreign object, yeah. It's a foreign object. Um, now this... Right. <laughs> I knew where this joke was going, and this actually cracked me up. And it was yeah. probably because I knew where they were going with it. Like, I was like, I know, all right, I know where this is going. And yeah. was, I thought it was pretty funny, but it's probably because I wrote it in my head already. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. But uh, So here you go. Here's an example of, of what he walks into. Come on, let's get this shit over with. Where's the uh, foreign object? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, all right, this is going to be difficult. We'll need a uh, speculum, syringe, <laughs> 10 cc's of librium, and a bucket of ice cold water. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there you go, folks. I mean, you can't, you can't really... You couldn't do that in a movie okay. now. You couldn't do that today. There's no way. Well, it's, it's not even no, angry. And- it's not even like, you know... I think the fact that he comes out angry and he just has that, that grimace on his face <laughs> makes it even funnier. But from this point, this is where we start seeing the magic of, of Mark Blankfield because, to me, this is a turning point in his character because he's attracted to the girl that's in, in the uh, the office here. She's stripped down naked and he's not paying attention and finally he recognizes her. And we get uh, we get all of this. No sex? No! Sex! <laughs> sex is the first thing from my mind right now. So, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to my cock. <laughs> <laughs> my lab. My lab. <laughs> I've got to get back to my lab. <laughs> Wait. What's your name, nice doctor? Jaggle. Dr. Daniel. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Deckel. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Jekyll. Oh. I'm Ivy. You're kind of sweet. Um, I work at a club in Chinatown. Madam Woo Woo's? Why don't you visit me sometime? <laughs> Save the whales. <laughs> I love how you just throw that in there, too. Save the whales! Uh... So what's happened here is, like I said, she's totally naked. He's he ends up with a bucket that he's thrown the, the cold water on the foreign object to break him loose, like you would some dogs. And um, at this point, he's holding the bucket, and she's putting on her pantyhose, and she realizes uh, there's a hole in him, whatever, and he freaks out because he drops the bucket right, and he's like standing right at her body. She's standing up, and he's like down at midriff level, and he's doing all this weird physical, trying not to bump into her and all this stuff. Again, the the physical humor of this is what sells this. It's near impossible to even sell this thing to you on this on these clips without you actually seeing them. And again, she's uh she's from the uh, the other side of town. So she believes that hey, nobody does anything nice for free. They're always wanting something out of the deal. And so she's not used to that. And uh she gives him the pantyhose and he holds on to them. He goes back to the lab again and he's half asleep. He looks up at the clock and says, it's midnight. I must get to work. So he never goes home. All he does is work. This is where he accidentally spills some drugs together. So again, this is the whole party animal thing, right? Remember, he's trying to make the uh, the aphrodisiac. 
and he's just pouring chemicals together and it accidentally creates this aphrodisiac. Well, here, he accidentally creates this wonder drug. He pulls the magnifying glass out. It's all sparkly and stuff. He uh, thinks it's a mistake, thinks there's something wrong with it, and he just kind of sets it off to the side, and he lays down to take a quick nap. And when he does, there's a straw laying on the lab table. And when he snores, it comes flying over to his face. It starts starts slowly sneaking up to his nose, and it gets stuck in his nostril. He breathes out, and it blows the paper off of it, and he lays his head back down, and it lands right in the powder. And he snorts the stuff, and we get the first transformation. The best way to describe what he turns into is, remember on Saturday Night Live, when Steve Martin and, and Dan Aykroyd did uh, Two Wild and Crazy Gas, right? They were big, oh, yeah. big swingers. That's what he turns into on the nth degree, right? His hair poofs out. He grows a cap tooth that has love written on it. He's get, His cocaine fingernail pops out. His shirt gets real tight. The lapel pops up. Gold chains and hair. I mean, it's it's a full-on, like, old-school werewolf transformation. Yeah, I, it actually <laughs> is kind of gross, like a werewolf transformation with the, the hair. It's, I don't know, it's something unsettling about watching <laughs> hair come out of pores. And he just turns into this character, and it's all like... <laughs> Get down! <laughs> and all this kind of stuff, right? You know, you've seen people portrayed like this, but not in the 80s, right? This is a a person that would have been long gone by this point, you would think, <laughs> right? With the rings and the coke and the hair and the shirt with the lapel. It's almost like he turned into a 70s gigolo <laughs> of some sort. And then he uh, he breaks out, gets the pantyhose, wraps them around his neck like a scarf, goes outside, and... Again, just the physical humor. He's climbing up on these rails, and he's humping the rails. He gets on this dude's hood of his car. It's a nice Lincoln. Steals the dude's Lincoln. Takes off down the road. And it shows him like his his face when he's driving is freaking hilarious. Because in his eyes, you can see what he's seeing. And the road signs are going by, and they're like sparkling and stretching like he's, <laughs> like he's totally on acid or something. And he's just smiling and driving. He comes to a stop sign. There's a car in front of him, and he's honking the horn from the go, but it's but there it's a red light, and the guy says, "Hey, blow it out your ass!" And he like just shoves the car, he rams his car into that car, and just runs him out into traffic, <laughs> and just keeps on going like do 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 do. I love the haphazardly feeling this guy's got, man. He is just like, I'm Captain Cool. You can't hurt me. I'm gonna do whatever I want. It's very much like the mask. Well, I, you guys, okay, get you're not talking about Rocky Dennis. <laughs> Are we talking Rocky Dennis? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking like Jim Carrey, the mask. Yeah, because <laughs> he's super cartoony. Oh yeah, uh, can do all these weird physical things. Uh, I see a big uh, similarity between the character in the mask and and this character, except this one's more cocaine based. Yeah, the the mask is like the the, the kid friendly version of that. No, you're right. right. I mean, it's if you think about it, the, the plot is almost identical as far as yeah that goes. I mean, he didn't really have a villain in this one, but yeah, but and, yeah. yeah, what he's doing, he's he's deciding to go to Madame Woo Moo's, right? Because he's got he's got, got her pantyhose, he's got her scent, and uh, he's going after. Her. And uh, he goes to goes to Madame Woo Moo's, and even, everything about this, you can't even describe all of this, right? Jamie, it's kind of like trying to talk about Kentucky Fried Movie and describing all the scenes. It's just near impossible. Well, yeah, you pretty much have to walk through the entire movie if you do that. And, Which is and what I'm doing. <laughs> some things you just can't put into words. Um, I mean, and what I mean is in, in great detail. Like, in order right. to get the actual picture, you'd have to yeah, you gotta really, see it. really describe it. To, see it to for yourself. Across. Right. But he, he pulls up outside of Madame Woo Woo's, which is a sushi mm-hmm. bar. Madame bar? Woo Woo. <laughs> Madame Woo Woo. <laughs> <laughs> funny. She, house, she houses the uh, like the newest up and coming new wave punk bands. Right. And it's it's what it is. It's a punk club slash sushi bar. I guess we can call him Hyde at this point. Hyde walks in and uh, orders some chicken sushi. <laughs> <laughs> they wrap with a raw chicken. 
<laughs> so that's what he orders. And then the the announcer comes out and announces Ivy's band, which is pretty hilarious, which kind of sounds like this. And now for your listening endurement, Madame Awuhu is ashamed to present Ivy and the Shitty Rainbows. Hey. <laughs> and we get a little song here. You, you, you've got Ivy singing in this band. She comes out pre-Lady Gaga, I guess. <laughs> and she's got this outfit that's got like Christmas lights on it. And she's lighting up certain areas of her body. And that's what she's singing about, you know. So, uh, just uh, sit you in your windows. But uh, I love the announcer because you can tell she does not want to be there. <laughs> she may be Madame Woo Woo. I don't know. By the time it's all said and done, he grabs her. Throws her in one of the booths. You see a little action kind of happen, and then all of a sudden she runs out, grabs him by the hand, and they're going back to her bedroom. And again, like I said, she's uh, she's used to uh, using her assets to to get things. We kind of get this description of what's going on right here. So how do you want it? Front to front, front to back, back to back, side by side, standing, sitting, leaning, looking, lifting, laughing, lurking. I want it always. <laughs> You're the doctor. What? What do you mean I'm the doctor? I mean, whatever you want. Oh, of course. Sorry. I've been under terrible, terrible stress at work. Oh, uh, what do you do? I'm a Chrysler dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Probably my favorite line in the whole movie. <laughs> a very timely joke that uh, yes. a lot of people probably wouldn't get today. But Oh, man. <laughs> but um, that had me cracking up when she's going down the list. Oh, yeah, yeah. The list yeah. of options, I was like, wow, she's she's like an auctioneer. Look at her go. <laughs> she's she's good. <laughs> uh, so needless to say, there's a scene where she pulls out this teddy bear that's like mechanical of some sort. And it, she puts it on her leg and it starts like humping her leg. And he finds it amusing. Then he walks up to her and takes her. she reaches out her hand and says, my name's Ivy. And he takes her hand and he shoves her whole hand in his mouth. <laughs> And then he starts unpu- unbuttoning his pants while her hand's in his mouth. So, I mean, it's just so bizarre. Him changing characters like he does in this is pretty impressive. Because he's making all this happen. It's not any kind of effects other than the goofy hair that he's got. The rest of it is just him doing his thing. Oh, man. So, needless to say, <laughs> the next uh, the next morning, he wakes up. And he's in Ivy's bed. He has no idea how he got there. He don't even know that he's in bed with her. He doesn't remember anything as Jekyll. He gets out of the bed, and he tries to, <laughs> he tries to get out of the bed, and he's wearing flippers. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't walk, so he falls down. But he's wearing chaps, and he's got a bouquet of flowers stuck down in his crotch and a wig on. <laughs> And he walks over to the table, and there's a stack of receipts where he's going out and spent thousands of dollars on just stuff. round ice cubes and Nazi uniforms. <laughs> it's, it's just insane, man. And uh, then he kind of says this <laughs> How far into the muck of my beast ancestors have I descended? <laughs> With the uh, the Zucker brothers, yeah, they nailed it a couple times. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and that's one of them. The only problem is they follow it up with that far, and the goat goes. <laughs> Actually, it was a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's funny when you do it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so he immediately runs out of there and goes to find Mary to apologize, even though you know she don't know anything about it. But he's willing to go say. You know, I, I've got to stay on the straight and narrow, and, and I would never try to do anything to her bother you. And, and the whole, this whole thing here, she's like doing a, I don't even know what you, what do you call these when you're racing the horses, but you're not really racing them. It's it's like a show, like a dog show, but like a horse show, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a horse like show. Like dressage? Sure. 
<laughs> I thought that's what you wear when you're going uh, on a date or a prom or something. <laughs> that's a corsage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you knew that. I know. Um. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, this whole time he's trying massage before you do massage. massage. He's apologizing to her while she's racing this horse and jumping over the fences and all this kind of stuff. And it's just it's forgettable. It, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, but it cuts back to uh, Jekyll sneaking back into the hospital. I think at this point he's kind of been banned from supposed to being there. And this scene, guys, this is one of those that just jumps out to me. Well. Of course, he's jumping, but he's walking down that hall, and he hears the voice of, you know, the owner of the hospital or the or the manager of the hospital coming. So he does this dive off scene. You know what I'm talking about? He does like almost a somersault in the air <laughs> to jump out of scene. Oh, yeah. It's just it's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the manager's got this rugged looking dude, right? And he's taking him in to go meet uh, the rich guy and offer him his nuggets, right? He's going to offer him... Uh, actually, he's going to offer his left testicle. Is that right? I think yeah, because he's right. right-handed. Right. <laughs> he makes that joke. Yeah. And then uh, the the old guy asked him, how, how about an offer for both? And he's like, man, he said, I love capitalism, but I don't think I can do that. But uh, And then the old man, whenever he gets... I don't know why they just threw this in there. But he gets to where he almost kind of gets in a comatose state or whatever. He gets too excited. And he's got this little talk box. With an actual mouth. <laughs> it's an actual mouth. It, it almost looks like, I'm just going to say it, some kind of sexual device. <laughs> it really did. It really does. <laughs> like a flashlight or something, you know? But it starts talking, and we get an auction going on. It gets pretty crazy. Mr. Howes will pay you an additional $50,000 for the paradise. No way. He ups his bid to 100000 for the dangling beauties. Uh-uh. Bolt! Bolt! I need Bolt! One million dollars! <laughs> Excuse me. Would you consider these, sir? They're barely used. Peanuts! Peanuts! <laughs> Guy, you well, well in the background too, there's like there's like a, 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 woman. a, a Saudi <laughs> prince looking dude back there. Yeah, no, and there's a when even a woman goes, Oh, I'd offer. Yeah. <laughs> but after this it goes to Jekyll back in his in his uh lab and he's gonna throw the drugs away, right? Because it's the right thing to do and he can't do it. He's he's hooked on the drugs. This is where Hyde starts kinda sneaking in and taking over at times, right? So, here he is. <laughs> I love it when he says he has to weigh the drugs just to see how much it is because, he, he, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep the data on all this information, right? It'd just be wrong to just throw it away. And uh, he kind of goes into this little spiel. I'll just weigh it first to see how much I'm actually throwing out. That's important. Important scientific data. Official weight. A lot. <laughs> oh, I'm acting like a two-year-old baby. Why throw it away? I worked hard to come up with this stuff. I should save it for future experiments. <laughs> future experiments, that's it. I'll save it. Not all of it. Just a little tiny bit. Maybe, oh, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I would ever take any effort again myself. No, nope, I'll get rid of it. Who needs it? Not me. I've got self-control. <laughs> and then right after that, he snorts another big line of it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is the scene where, where you see the transformation. I put a little clip of this out there on Facebook and stuff where he changes again. He does a backflip <laughs> and all this stuff. And he changes. And then the dude that had his testicles cut off is coming out in the hallway and he's walking real slow and he just <laughs> Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde comes down through the hallway and he's skipping like a little girl and he just knees him <laughs> hey watch it buddy <laughs> <laughs> so you get that and then <laughs> you gotta love this right when he walks outside and there's a nun there and he just pulls down his pants and moons her real fast <laughs> <laughs> and he just runs he steals an ambulance Goes to find Ivy. She's at the grocery store. 
he's climbing through the grocery store. He's sniffing around like a dog. He finds her, and uh, again, you, you know what he's after. He's trying to trying to you know get her home again. Ends up buying her groceries, which she had eleven items, and you can only have ten items or less, which <laughs> really pisses him off. And he just knocks everybody down that's in the line in front of him, throws the money at the cashier, and pushes her cart out. <laughs> and he gets to the ambulance, and he opens the back door, and he just picks up the whole shopping cart and just throws it in the back and <laughs> takes off. <laughs> I got four pages of notes on this. Well, I think, I think, the, I think <laughs> the next night. day is the, uh, the surgery day, right? But this is when he, he wakes up the next morning again, and there's two, two sets of feet in the bed with him that they're oh. at his head. <laughs> And he, and he touched one and some and it's some dude that goes, hey, man, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where he goes to Mary's house again to apologize, and he climbs up on, 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 her, on her balcony. Actually, he's at, <laughs> at the dad's balcony, and he falls down to hers. And he goes in there, and uh, he's decided that he, he wants his woman. So he's going to try to make it up to her by having sex with her, which is all she's been wanting for a long time, and he's just never interested. Well, they play the romantic music. This is a very Kentucky Fried movie type scene, right? Where he's pulling off his clothes, she's pulling off hers, he's playing the music, he's got the, the wine. He comes over there, they get in the bed, he turns the lights off, and then instantly... <laughs> he lights him a, slate! He, oh, yeah. he lights a cigarette, yeah. He's like, that was incredible. She's like, uh, didn't we forget something? <laughs> And uh, when all that's going on, uh, the dad busts in and says this. So, I did hear my daughter being ravished down here. No, you didn't. (laughs) Jekyll, you're low. You're disgusting. You defy my orders at the hospital and then come here right under my own roof to deflower my most precious possession. But, sir, I've decided to perform the operation. You have? Fuck your brains out, kids. (laughs) Dude, that I feel like that actor that played the the uh, dad in this. Well, I thought yeah. he was like chewing up the scenery too, like the main guy. Oh yeah, yeah, without a doubt, yeah, and that's that's why he was hired. Because you remember the scene where he gets the laugh. Oh, and he's on the floor, and, and he just and he just keeps laughing. And even when they go in the other room and you hear the door open up, he's still out there laughing. <laughs> you know, and this movie's quite a bit ahead of those movies. It's what three or four years ahead of the sh- Hot Shot movies. Almost a stuff. decade, right? Probably. Probably older than that, yeah. Yeah, it was, right. it was. I was. I'm sorry. I was. I was thinking the Naked Gun movie. Oh, oh, okay. Is so, another example of where it works and where it doesn't work? What do you think on those? I, I, I oh, Jamie, yeah. on the Naked Gun movies. Yeah, oh, I, I love all those. So again, how is that funny? <laughs> and then everybody. Well, just... and you know what? Part of that is Leslie Nielsen. Leslie like, Nielsen. It's hard yeah. to beat him, even though. Um. There are there are spoofs that he's in that just are oh funny. T- toward the but, end but, he kept doing oh. all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. he would just do anything. But Frickin- it's, <laughs> it's Zucker when Brothers, he man. Hits, yeah. he's hilarious. Yeah, it's it's the combination of, of the Zucker Brothers and and Leslie Nielsen without a doubt. Well, I you know what I think another example just like that, and I said the same thing when I watched it because we just we're actually about to the next like in it that comes out. Um, we're talking about full moon, full moon high. Oh yeah, and there are so many things in that movie that could have been so funny, right? If the Zuckers had done it, right? I don't like it. Just and I love yeah. Larry Cohen, I do, but yep, it, it, spoofing it, is not his thing. I, I, I totally agree. You know, there's 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 a charm to it to that movie. It's kind of like this one. It's there's a charm to it, but to me, the the slapstick kind of humor that they're going for with with the Zucker type humor is not what makes this movie any fun at all. It's it's the little snippets of him just going off that makes this thing work. It's, it's kind of like you were that's, saying. That's to the actor's credit, not exactly. Even his, you yeah, know, the filmmakers. And you know, bringing up the Leslie Nielsen stuff. I mean, come on, you you put him and Linda Blair together and repossessed, and you're like, yeah, this is not good. <laughs> And it's such a shame because yeah. I was excited to see that because of him. Me too. I even forced myself to like it, and then later found out that nah, it wasn't worth liking. <laughs> <laughs> later, I found out that I had lied to myself. You're right. <laughs> I did it. I did it too. Don't feel bad. I lied to myself uh, too. <laughs> so we're getting to the meat and potatoes now. Of this thing. I'll try to hurry up, but he decided to do the surgery. It's surgery day. And what happens is during the middle of the surgery, he starts changing automatically. He no longer has to take the drug. It just starts happening. 
he's trying to hold it together, and there's some very funny physical things happening here where he's trying to change. They're like, Dr. Jekyll, you okay? Yes, I'm fine. And he's all like shaking and all this kind of stuff. His hair pops out. <laughs> one little strand of hair pops up, you know, real crazy looking. And then he's asking for the scalpel. And this is where the nurse, the the with the the boobs hanging out, goes to get the scalpel and and try to find it, bring it back to him. And his hand accidentally hits her shirt, and it reveals one of her breasts. And it is straight up liar, liar right here. Remember when Jim Carrey's in the elevator oh, yeah. with the girl, and mm-hmm. it's a, it's exactly the same. Dude, thing. I didn't even think about that. That's funny. And, uh, it really is. It's identical. Uh, sounds like this. Action. Yes. <gasps> Gazongas, baby! <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he's changing, and he's trying to hold it together, and then he takes all the organs which are on this tray and just throws them in the air, and they go scattering everywhere, and that's his way of getting out of there. And uh, while that's going on, the guy that's in charge of the hospital decides that he's just going to cut himself open and put all of his organs <laughs> into the old dude to keep him alive. <laughs> like, we're still, we're still going to do the operation. Not with his organs, you're not. <laughs> so he's like, all right, fine. <laughs> he takes off running, and that's when he runs in the Newt's office, which, again, is the Tim Thomerson, who's doing a boob job on this on this lady. Hey, you're going to feel a little pressure, and, and it, you're going to, you know, it's almost kind of fun. He's building up all this, you know, the, the fun time of doing a boo job, whatever. And then Dr. Jekyll walks in and uh, starts ranting and raving. Sounds a little bit like this. You've got to help me! <sighs> Jekyll, I... Uh... Something has gone wrong. <laughs> My experiments. I really fucked up, babe! Jekyll, you're not making sense. I can't explain it all right now. All I can tell you is that something unexpected and horrible is happening to me. I change into another person. An animal. And I can't help it. I've got I just, I just left the man in surgery. You've got to help me get the drugs to counteract this immediately. Counteract what? This. <laughs> Again, I mean, that's not sound effects. That's just him changing his voice, jumping in and out of character. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's so ridiculous. But when he says that, then the Newt says, you think you got a problem? And he pulls open his smock, and he's wearing undergarments. Ladies' undergarments. Lacy. Uh, <laughs> Lacy. <laughs> Uh, again, just adding to the craziness of this thing. So, Jekyll jumps out the window, and they forget all about this woman they're giving the boob job to, and they've over-injected. I don't even know how to... <laughs> the best way I can describe it is like if you're in a marching band and you're carrying the bass drum. <laughs> <laughs> or if you've ever seen the Goodyear there. blimp, like the shape and everything. <laughs> again, it's crazy, corny, sex-driven, you know, teenage humor here. But he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. We, we can we can reduce. She's like, oh, no, 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 you're not touching these. <laughs> so she's proud of him, right? This is where he goes back to his lab again. Oh, my gosh. And this is where the, <laughs> the nurse comes in. It's got the note for him to go to London. And it's the, the lady from... It's Lynch. Uh, hey, yeah. movie, Under the Sun. From uh, yeah. Insidious, I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street, like, Dead End. Detroit Rock City. I mean, she's in everything. And uh, and I love this scene too. So it's uh, it sounds like this. Doctor Jekyll. Yes, I am Doctor Jekyll. It's a telegram for you, sir. Telegram. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bad news. Help me, him, us. I'm a drug-crazed beast with a giant erection that won't go away no matter how many times I do it. You're a nurse. What can you give me for it? I can give you $60 in my wedding ring. Bus fare! I need money for drugs! 
So he takes the money that she's got, takes the note. He's going to find Ivy because he's going to impress her again with, hey, look, i got to go to London and, you know, make get this money, and that's going to buy more drugs. And so he still, steals a car from this woman who's <laughs> sitting in the car, and he takes her head and shoves her up through the sunroof and shits the sunroof on her so she's like a siren going, eh! <laughs> and cars are pulling over out of the way because they think it's <laughs> like an emergency vehicle coming through. It's just stupid, but I, I just love it. It's so terrible. Anyways, he finds Ivy at the arcade. And, of course, it just gets kind of out of hand here. He's trying his best to impress her and stuff. But he ends up saying, hey, uh, she gets in a driving game console, right? She's in this thing. And he starts shaking it, and it, like, blows up. <laughs> I don't know if it just knocks her unconscious or what, but he takes off. Goes to the airport, jumps on top of a plane, rides the top of the plane to London. Ivy's pissed off. She goes to catch a train, (laughs) rides a train to London. But uh, at the award show, you got Newt there, you got Mary there, and they're sitting there, and this is the Putz Puller Prize. (laughs) That's the name of the award that you get. And uh, they announce, ladies and gentlemen, the Queen. And it's a dude. (laughs) Thanks, everyone, for showing up. They're expecting Jekyll to be there, but they don't get Jekyll. They get Hyde. And they bring out this other guy to accept the award because Jekyll's not there. And uh, we get this little this little nugget of greatness, too. I know my good friend, Dr. Jekyll, would like you people to know that this vial of his powder, the last trace of his work, which was found in his lab, will be donated to the Putzpuller Institute for further study. Marson World! <laughs> <laughs> then he swings down like Errol Flynn. He's like in the very back of the auditorium. Starts swinging across on the curtains. Drops down on the stage. Pulls the package or the, the vial that he's got of the powder. Snorts it up in front of everybody there. And then he starts doing stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely George Chikaris. Take a bow, George. Beautiful, beautiful human being. George Chikaris. Go play with the switchblade, Georgie. Beautiful human being. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> well, it's great to be back in jolly old England. Land of royalty, manners, and bad teeth. How about these Arabs, huh? Yeah, I passed some fancy hotel on my way over here tonight. The doorman's parking a camel. I... <laughs> bad. They love me. I love the band. They're great. George, Lord George, been with me five minutes. Five minutes more. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I, I, excuse me. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. You must. Uh, you must. Uh, uh, this, you have to excuse me. I mean, you must be sitting there thinking, who oh, is this guy? He's cute. It's <laughs> funny. But where's Jekyll? <laughs> well, Jekyll's not going to make it tonight. He took a powder. Up my nose. Maybe you can see him up there. No, 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 no. no. I kid him a lot. That's, that's because we're very close. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times my daughters come to the house and said, Where's Jekyll? <laughs> <laughs> hey, she fell in love with this movie too. She likes this stupid kind of humor. But he takes the microphone when he's talking in. And he does. He just shoves the whole thing in his mouth and just go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, ad libbed without a doubt because he's even stumbling over his own words. Ah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, you know, he's cute. <laughs> you know, that's what I love about it, man. Um, so, and then out of this, he just does a musical number. <laughs> He's got a backup singers and everything. Yeah, why not? You know, the the script the, the the stage goes dark, spotlights come on, the song starts, and uh yeah, it's uh, it's a catchy little song. Stay in your seats, the show's just begun.
<laughs> and of course, while wow, this is going on, he's removing clothing. Right? Like he's got the tearaway he's pants. To, right. He's he's starting to strip down. He pulls his pants up instead of pulling them down. He pulls them like from the ankles and rips them up to the sides so he can hold those out and start spinning around. <laughs> And then eventually he just breaks away the pants, like you said, and he starts flashing everybody in the crowd, humping the air. (laughs) Everybody's getting upset. Oh, man. And then out of nowhere, it it changes. It turns into a black and white, almost trying to return to the original, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde movie. It's black and white. And he runs out and... Remember, he still don't have clothes on, but he's got this long black cape now. And he runs out in front of this horse and carriage. <laughs> right in front of the horse, and he just lifts... <laughs> he flashes the horse. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps running. And at this point, you got all your main characters chasing him. And they chase him up to a rooftop. And uh, he, he, he ends up falling off the roof. You think you know, like he's been shot, and he falls to the ground. And he comes back to modern times. And at this point... The two girls realize who he is. You know, Ivy's saying, well, this is my my guy. He's the crazy lunatic guy that just won't leave me alone. And then, you know, Mary is saying, well, this is is my fiancé, and he's real well-reserved and all this stuff. And what they really want is right opposite. You know, Ivy wants the nice guy that, that is not a sex fiend, and Mary just wants to be ravaged. And so they end up working out a deal. (laughs) <laughs> well, they're going to kind of... I'm talking about wife swapping. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they work out this deal where they think they can make all this work out to all of everybody's benefit. And the best part about that is right after that, when they leave the scene, you got the guy that was the queen and, uh, and then Newt, who we've, you know, like I said, was wearing the lingerie earlier. Uh, you get this conversation. Would you like to come up to the palace and see the royal scepter? (laughs) Your Majesty. (laughs) So there you go. We end the movie with a gay joke. (laughs) I have talked way too much about this movie. (laughs) You said it was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Obviously, I pointed out there's a ton of flaws in it. No doubt about it. And but I say for the most part of it, you need to go and just check out where where Mark Blankfield's on stage just doing his thing, and you're gonna go, hey, wait a minute, I've kind of seen this before, but it was a different guy dressed as the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, one thing we didn't mention about the movie was the uh, the final scene of uh, Robert Louis Stevenson's grave. <laughs> His, his corpse flipping over in the grave. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, good call, Johnny, because that actually made me laugh out loud. I, yeah. yeah. Well, as soon as we saw the grave, and then it starts to go down, I was like, "He's going to be spinning in his grave," and then <laughs> he was, and then that made me laugh. You know what I noticed though is that the jokes that made me laugh are the ones that I predicted. Yeah. <laughs> you knew, you knew where so, it was going, right? But the times when they, when I was like, "Oh, I hope they do this," and they went another way, I didn't think it was funny. But like yeah. when they when when they went the way that I expected them to, then it was funny <laughs> to me. It, and it may be that thing too because of just how old it is now. But we've seen so many kind of spoofs now that you do kind of predict where you want it to go, and it does it, and you just kind of go, "Eh." That's kind of how it was with all the scary movies because I. Uh, I I yeah. really just didn't think they were funny, and that's. But it's that thing. If it would have came out back in this time period, I probably would have thought it was funny, right? Well, there were to me those movies are funnier than like you know disaster movie and date movie yeah. and oh yeah, uh, yeah yeah all of those that were just they don't even they don't even like those guys don't even know how to spoof properly. It's not even a spoof it's a it's basically just pop culture reference after pop culture reference yeah. after pop culture reference like that's all they're doing right. for no reason well, and, and it, it dates their movie have, too yes absolutely like you cannot go back and watch that movie 20 years later if you're a kid and have any idea what's going on yeah. like or or why it's supposed well to be and they fun. they have like Nicole well, Richie jokes and stuff in there and I don't I mean I know people my age that still don't know who she is well yeah I mean she to be honest, it was you had to kind of really pay attention to 
what was going on at the time to even know who she was. So, and even then people might know the name, but have no idea what she looked like because they never watched the show. And so, oh, well, may, <laughs> it's not funny. But the one thing I liked that the Wayans did when they were doing the, <laughs> uh, this, like this, like scary movie is I did note this about them is I think that they did a really good job of weaving in the references to the various horror films. Right. And one thing that I really liked was, and this is a simple thing, but they would change the hairstyles of the actresses to go with whatever movie they were supposed to be doing at the, like whatever movie they were lampooning at the time. But they made it work in a, like a, an actual narrative, you know? So they weren't just like throwing, they, now they're obviously, they were throwing stuff at you here and there, but they did their best to make it work within the story rather than just pelting you uh, yep. relentlessly with, you know, non sequiturs. Right. And, you know, because we can say that it, it all, you know, dates it, which it does, but. You know, even airplanes dated with the Saturday Night Live stuff. I mean, Saturday Night Fever stuff. And, you know, it, it's hard to do a parody because you're making fun of what's happening at the time. Some of it will still fly. Some of it won't, you know. And that's that's always the trick. It's weird that, you know, it's funny we're bringing up Repossessed again. But, you know, it was kind of one of those, you know, doing what the scary movies were tr was trying to do as well and trying to tie all these horror references into it, thinking it was some new keen idea and some of them worked some of them didn't you know uh i think about uh linda blair's lay on the bed and she goes uh and here's my impression of don adams hey 99 where's the chief and, <laughs> and he goes do not get smart with me right <laughs> yeah okay see i think it's funny because i get it but right, like, exactly. <laughs> like somebody who has no idea what that is? Right. Would not think that was funny at all. Right over your head. <laughs> I got a good example of that too because my my daughter liked watching you know Futurama and all these shows that came on I guess Comedy Network at the time, and she had just recently seen the '70s version of of uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, you oh, know, okay. which which absolutely floored her. This this is when she was I don't know. 16, 17. She was just blown away by Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And that ending, you know, the ending that modified oh, yeah. all of us. And uh, she was watching Futurama, and there was a scene where they're dressed up like robots, and they're in this robot society, and they're trying not to give themselves away. And a robot looks at them and points and goes, Ah! Mm -hmm. At them. And she's like, she's like, if I would not have seen that movie two days ago, I would have no idea what they're making fun of right there. You know? And I was like, there you go. <laughs> So it's it's amazing how it all influences each other, and you know some of it's there for you to get. Family Guy, it's always full of stuff that if you never saw the movies they're talking about or the reference, then it's completely over your well, head. Well, sometimes I mean, sometimes they'll get like into some really obscure stuff, and I'm like, I think it's only funny to like Seth MacFarlane and two writers. <laughs> but that's the chance you take with any kind of of parody, and I, I hate that this one is designed. Almost as a parody with all the, the the jokes that they put in this one. Like I said, some of them work, some of them don't. But to me, this movie is all about the physical stuff that that, that Mark is pulling off, and it's because I grew up watching Fridays, and I remembered the craziness of him on there as well. Uh, I think Shout Factory put out like the DVDs of Friday. It's like the best of Friday. So, yeah, Johnny, I'll, I'll try to send you a link where you can check out some of those because it was really it was really good first time i saw the plasmatic oh that's cool was on that so show. they had so they had yeah. music on there too yeah it was like saturday night live it was just a a abc oh, version wow. of it with with some skits that were actually funnier i mean i think if they would have lasted a few more years when everybody left the original group of saturday night live fridays would have been much bigger but yeah it, it's got some great stuff in it and you can see where they built characters off of the, what they created on Fridays and carried it on. And this is obviously a side project of of coming off of that show. Again, like I said, it's all about when you see it. It's probably not near as funny to you guys as it was to me back in the day. And hey, I'm sure there's movies y'all have that are that way too. I know this movie's bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got a lot of those. And there's you know nothing wrong with that. Like A movie that I absolutely love and I have to fight to watch it every year at Halloween time, but it's a tradition of mine, is Jacko. 
<laughs> I love the hell out of that movie, and it's we so did, bad. We just did Jacko. Not too long ago, yeah. Oh, man, I missed that one. i got to hear it. <laughs> but uh, And then Brian's going to be all mad. I'm going to make him watch it. Because <laughs> it'll be fresh in my brain. But, uh, yeah, I I adore that movie. It is one of my favorites. And, like, you know, people are like, oh, what's your guilty pleasure? It is not a guilty pleasure. It's a pleasure. I don't, I am not, I don't feel guilty about anything that I enjoy. So, I just like it. And it's yeah. terrible. Sure. I mean, you guys just did it. So, you know <laughs> yeah. it's terrible. It's pretty like, bad. There are, there are complete bits in there where the kid will just flat forget his lines Oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, so this is the this is the take you're going with. Oh, okay, well, we'll just leave that in there. We don't need to edit that well, out. I think, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I think the kid actor in that is the director's director's son. Right. Son. Yeah. So, yeah, like, right. man, there were so many times where I was thinking, man, if if they were, if he wasn't, you know, his son, they might have gotten a decent kid out of that. <laughs> hey, no, was, it's was, true. Was that one of those James Best productions too? Was it, was, oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, he's it's the other movie we did too, uh, Death Mask. <laughs> Same director. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> hey, Waffle Boy. <laughs> oh man. Did he get John Carradine for Death Mask? I uh, no. He is, he is some old guy in the, but I don't think it's Carradine. What do we do first, Johnny? Okay, I uh, I'm just gonna say good lessons from bad movies. Good lessons from bad movies. Uh, don't invent your own drugs. <laughs> <laughs> That'd probably be a good one. I don't know, man. It was pretty much the same as meth. It looked like he he just <laughs> had a professional meth lab. <laughs> Did you get anything, Jamie? Uh, well, I would say, I guess this doesn't directly apply to me, but I, I would say don't sign up for a testicle transplant if <laughs> unless you make sure the floor is really clean. <laughs> Uh, for me, uh, I learned our good lesson from this is straws are not only dangerous to sea turtles, but also to uh, doctors asleep next to a big pile of drugs. <laughs> uh, what about um, uh, any upgrades? Well, how would you upgrade the movie? I'd take away a lot of the sla- or the, I'd take away a lot of the Zucker brother wannabe humor and do more of just straight up physical stuff. Which, to me, is the selling point of this thing. I would agree with that. I just think I would, uh, you know what, maybe pull in the Zuckers. Like, if this is the kind yeah. of movie that they wanted, I would pull in people who know how to do it. Right. I, well, I think that's all three of us said kind of the same thing, because mine is that um, I wrote the visual gags are great, but maybe a second pass at the script. <laughs> like, dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just they, they came up with a reason to let him chew up the scenery. I and mean, that's basically what you can chalk this down to. But it works, man. It's kind of like building an entire TV show, The Incredible Hulk, just so you can see Lou Ferrigno for five minutes of it, right? <laughs> that, that's kind of the equivalent of this movie. It, it's 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 only worth seeing the good things, yeah. right? On the other hand, there's people that like this kind of cheap shot humor, too. I mean, uh, what was the movies we covered on uh, Cinema Beef? That were the horror kind of ripoffs. It was the Transylvania oh, Six yeah. Five Thousand, which uh, Saturday the Fourteenth. Fantastic. That, that that one actually works pretty good. No, it wasn't Saturday the Fourteenth. It was when it had uh, the tall man. Transylvania in it Twist. Transylvania Twist. To me, th- th- this has got that kind of humor in it. It's like, eh. <laughs> I see what you did there, but it really wasn't as funny as it could have been. It's kind of like what Jamie was saying earlier. Should be funny, but it just fell a little flat. I think Transylvania Six Five Thousand, actually, and Transylvania Twist, those are both pretty good examples because I think both of those films, I while I do like a lot about them, they could have been so much better. Oh yeah, yeah. And this is, I, I I think I would say pretty much the same thing about this. Yep. There are some things that I really like. There are a couple things that made me laugh out loud, and you know, it was, and I'm really glad that I saw it. Like I don't regret seeing it at all i just but the main thought that was on my mind the whole time is this could have been better oh yeah Yeah, definitely i didn't get any what were they thinking because to me i felt like all all the stuff was either pretty well thought out or um i don't know (laughs) the movie is about taking cocaine and becoming a beast that's what they were thinking exactly yeah (laughs) that's pretty much it (laughs) 
<laughs> sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It, it's all rolled up into this movie. <laughs> oh, you were talking about who he reminded you of, like during the transformation or whatever. Yeah. He, only, he kept reminding me of Chevy Chase in uh, Modern oh, yeah. Problems, where he's Modern like, Problems. I like it. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's that's another movie I bring up to people all the time. They're like, I've never seen it. And I was like, there's about, I don't know, 20 good minutes of that you need to see. The rest of it, you can kind of go, eh. But for the most yeah. part, it's worth it just Which to movie? see those scenes. Modern I've never problems. seen it. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, what I hear is there's about 20 good minutes of that movie that you need to see. <laughs> 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 it's Chevy Chase being Chevy Chase, man. He's got like telepathy powers, and he uses them for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a, a canister of toxic waste dumped on his car while he's driving, and it gives him these powers. <laughs> uh, hey, so where would you, where would you guys where did you guys uh, sit this movie on the bus? Oh, well, here's my thing. This is one that I show people clips of all the time. I know it's a bad movie, but for me, and I know this this probably won't be where you guys put it, but I'm gonna put it in the very front seat as a, you know, a movie that I would definitely let people. I, I say you need to check it out just to say that you did, and just see this guy's physical humor. What about you, Jamie? I think I would probably put it somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Because I'd say I'd say it like lands pretty half and half for me, and yep. it's definitely not a bad. Like it's not so bad. I want to like kick it out the emergency door or anything, you know. But um, I also don't want to have to look at it every time I look in the rearview mirror. So I <laughs> put it like midway. Back. And I think honestly, I'd put this um, right behind the. I would say first seat back. Like like I like cool. a lot about it, but you know, um, and I think there are a lot of things I like. You said I would probably show people. Um, this just the scene alone with the breast augmentation is pretty awesome. Any movie where you moon a nun and then you flash a yeah. horse, you got to give it some kind of credit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, folks. With that being said, I'm going to shut up for a minute. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Did you guys ever notice that podcasts talk about the same movies over and over again? Yeah, as much as I love Friday the 13th, I don't need another show telling me how good it is. Exactly. Same thing goes for Halloween. It's a great movie, but come on, there's other stuff out there. There should be a show that highlights movies that everyone else seems to skip over. Like, oh, I always wanted to talk about Absentia. And I want someone to cover the room. The Skeleton Key's a good one. Then let's just do one. We can call it The ABCs of Hidden Horror, and we'll go through the alphabet talking about our favorite horror flicks that get ignored. Great idea! I know what my first one's gonna be. Join Brian, Dave, and me, Jamie, for the ABCs of Hidden Horror on the Horrorphilia Network, where we might discuss some of your neglected favorites, or introduce you to something new. Hey, you guys! Alright, folks! That's going to do it for this episode, but before we go, we want to say thanks to Jamie for coming hanging out with us again. It's always fun to oh, yeah. around. And I w- I'm going to open up the floor and say, tell us all the 54 different shows you're on right now and what you got happening. <laughs> well, first of all, thanks again, guys. I always enjoy hanging out with you. This is such a great show. It's one of my favorite shows to just listen to. And then so the opportunity comes up for me to be on it. I'm I'm going to snap at it every time because you, it's so fun. You you know why, right? Because of this. Montorino, you're going to You're going to die. die. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> as far as what I'm doing now, I uh let's see. I have been well with everything going on the way it is. I have a little bit of extra time, so I have been just going full force. And I've been dropping uh, Attack of the Colossal Collection episodes weekly, uh, which is not something that we've That's... ever had the time to do before. But And as far as watching goes, Brian and I are up to the bees in our collection. I'm very <laughs> proud of us. But the shows that I've released, we're still in the two packs. So we haven't even gotten to the A's yet, But as far as releases go. But we're getting there, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, Liking It, of course, is back. I just recorded an episode with Dan and Gav of the podcast on Haunted Hill, 
where they came on. Well, they just came on to talk about one movie. They came on to talk about Bad Moon, which is going to be on the next episode. And we have a new, the Y episode of ABC's of Hidden Horror is going to be recording this Sunday. Wow. Of course, I have the Married with Children podcast that drops every Wednesday where we're going through Married with Children episode by episode. I've been, I can't remember the last thing we did on Cinema Beef, but it wasn't that long ago. It hasn't come out yet, but everything's kind of a blur. I'm about to embark on this this year's Teapot Summer Series where we're doing movies of the 2000s. I can't really go into detail, but there is something kind of exciting happening if anyone out there used to listen to the Skeleton Crew. That's oh, look but, out! Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's that thing. It's uh, like you said with with everything kind of being uh, slowed down. I guess is the right word. I find myself on more shows too, and people say, "Hey, we're going to cover this." You want? Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, so it opens it up to where you got more time to to do some fun things like this. But you know, it's so easy to to you know burn yourself out too. So don't do that. <laughs> yeah, it is. It it is a thing that can happen, and I've done it before. Like back in the day when I used to do. I, when I was just like a mad woman, well, that, that was before I was married, so I had a whole kinds of time on my hands. Um, <laughs> but, but I, there, it was just insanity. You know, the amount I was just constantly podcasting, podcasting, podcasting. I can't yeah. do that anymore, and it will, it will start to burn me out. But I always have time for my friends, and Aww. I always love spending time with my friends, and that's really why I do it anyway, right? Sure. Is so I can talk about movies and fun stuff with people that are fun to talk to so right so when we do our our idea of maybe doing some movies that we really do like and we do Phantom of the Paradise I guess we need to invite you back oh are you kidding me (laughs) yes by the way I saw that poster love it yeah it did amazing yeah Uh, I'd like to have one of those (laughs) (laughs) oh well Glad you were here. It's always fun to have you. I mean, we you know we we've, we've been chums for a while, and and uh, yeah, I don't know. This is always fun. It's it's uh, I, I appreciate you saying how much you like the show, and it's a good show because Johnny and I are just kind of winging it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do it well, and it, it is seriously incredibly entertaining, and you are responsible for a lot of hours that Brian will never get back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> because of the movies, not the show. The show's yeah, not. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm sure you're dragging through a lot of stuff. He's like, oh, not again. Well, like you said, yeah. you know, uh, Jack. So again, I'll come right? in and I'll go. So today at work, I was listening to Short Bus, and he's like, oh man. <laughs> it's just like, what are you gonna make me watch now? Uh, not Miami Connection. <laughs> oh well, folks, that's all that we've got here. And again, if you're looking for all the shows that Jamie's on, she's on Horophilia Network, she's on the Legion Podcast, she's she's just out there. So just type in her name, you'll find her. She's she's everywhere. Uh, but I believe that's it for us. Johnny, you got anything yeah, else, man? <laughs> well, fine. It was fun as always. <laughs> it's fun as always. Would you like to go upstairs and see the Royal Scepter? <laughs> Folks, we're out of here. Adios. Bye.